Hello dear friends, I'm Samuel Moore and welcome to my Study with Samuel video series. So today, I'd like to tackle a subject that many students find challenging. We're going to look at how to play Allegria in different keys. Most commonly, Allegria is performed in the key of E major. And most students are very confident with playing it in that key. But in flamenco, it's often the case that we have to play Allegria in the key of A major, and also the key of C major. I find students are often not as comfortable with those keys, and I think the reason they often avoid it and get a bit scared by them is they assume that it's like learning a completely new paddle. The simple truth, however, is this. If you can play Allegria in the key of E, it's very easy to transfer all that you know to those other keys as well. And that's what we're going to look at today. Although many of you may be familiar with Allegria in the key of E, we're going to start with that simply because it's a good point of departure and a good solid ground for looking at the other keys. So let's just start with some basics. If you're playing Allegria in the key of E major, the scale that underpins the key is the E major scale. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. So they're the notes. And the reason it's important to know that scale is most of the melodic material that you'll be playing draws from that pool of notes. Related to this, to play the basic compass of Allegria, you just need two chords for the most part. E major, which is your tonic chord, and B7, voiced like so. And in terms of the compass, the rhythm, the chords, generally speaking, change on beats 3 and 10. So in other words, it's like you're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's a basic overview of roughly what's going on when you're playing the standard compass for Allegria in the key of E. Let's now just introduce a simple hand pattern with this hand to bring this all to life. We'll do it in three beat chunks. So on beats one, two, and three, you're basically gonna do three down strikes with the index finger, and you're changing chord part way through. Then on beats four, five, and six, we're going to tap with this finger, and then with the index finger go up, down, up, down. So in other words, we're on the dominant chord here. Four and five and six. So put that with what you've already got. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're then going to add a melodic bass line. All of this is played with rest strokes with the thumb. And we're essentially drawing notes from the E major scale we learnt earlier. The most logical choice, if we're holding this chord, is to go B, then lift the finger away to play the open A, and then bring it here on the F sharp to give you your final bass note. Seven, eight, nine. And you can see how they're all coming from that scale. And it's worth mentioning at this point, you can use any arpeggio you like here. So you can do a rolled arpeggio where you line the three fingers up on the three highest strings. So the third, second, and first string. And for each bass note, you can just peel away. Or alternately, you can do an arpeggio where you go from first to second to third, so a more straight rhythm. 
tie me down to you, but just be aware you can do that. Then on beats 10, 11 and 12 we move back to the, the tonic chord, the E, and it's really simple, it's the classic end for Allegria. You play the bass note, rest stroke with the thumb, index finger free stroke, and then drag the thumb down to fourth and third string, and then catch the first and second string together and combine it with a god pay. So it's basically this. Thus giving you 10, 11, 12. So put all that together and you get a simple allegria en basse in the key of E major. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, So, very quickly, we've got a basic compass phrase. It's worth mentioning at this stage there are naturally many variations of that phrase that you can do, and if you want to explore those in more detail, please have a look at my Allegria compass embellishments lesson, which I put on YouTube some months ago. But the purpose of today's class is not to show you hundreds of variations on that. It's to show you how all of the knowledge you've just learnt can be used in different keys. So with this in mind, now let's have a look at Allegria in the key of A major. Before we continue with today's lesson, I'd like to do a quick shout out to let you know about my new Patreon account. For those of you who've never come across Patreon before, Patreon is a unique crowdfunding platform that allows artists like myself to offer exclusive content in exchange for monthly pledges. Your generosity allows me to continue working as a full-time musician, and in exchange you get access to some really great material, from unseen tutorial videos similar to this one, to flamenco guitar lessons. You even get access to my weekly gathering, the Midweek Guitar Meet. This weekly study group takes place on Wednesday evenings, and is a great opportunity to connect with a global community of like-minded musicians who share your passion, at the same time as getting targeted feedback from myself on a regular basis. So if all this sounds interesting to you, please click the link in the description below to access my Patreon page and select an option that works for you. I look forward to meeting you, connecting with you, and together continuing our musical journey. Now, however, let's get back to today's lesson. Let's go through the same process we did before. The key of A major is underpinned by the A major scale. So the notes you need to worry about are the A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. So that's the pool of notes you're drawing from for most of your melodic ideas. In terms of the chords, again, it's very, very simple. Your tonic chord is A major, normally voiced like so. And your dominant chord is E7, usually voiced like so. And essentially, we're just moving between those chords in exactly the same way we were doing in the other key. We're just going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you see what I mean? Everything has basically stayed the same. All that's changed is the key. The good news, everything you learnt with this hand is still applicable. So on beats one, two, and three, just do the downstrikes. Beats four, five, and six, it's still tap, up, down, up, down. On beats 7, 8 and 9, we do a similar thing to what we did earlier. We're holding this chord down and we're using the notes of the scale to create a bass line melody. The logical, there are many things you can do here, but the logical choice is the open D string, the pinky playing C sharp, and then lift it away so you can play the B. And again, 
You can use arpeggios there in different forms. You can have the rolled arpeggios, or the more straight arpeggios. It's entirely down to you. But once you've played that phrase, you then land back on the tonic chord, and you just play the classic ending phrase, and it's the same hand pattern you used earlier. Rest stroke with the thumb, free stroke with the index, drag the thumb down, then play the last two notes together with the thumb combined with a god bay. So in other words, it's 10, 11, 12. And there you have it. Very quickly, just by knowing what key you're in, so what notes are you drawing from for the melody, and the basic chord structure, you can very quickly play the basic Allegria Compass in A major. I mean, if you can play Allegria in one key, it's very easy to play it in others. It's not like learning a whole new palo. All that's happened is the keys changed, and therefore the notes that you're drawing from and the chords have changed slightly. With all this in mind, let's conclude by looking at another common key, C major. So again, similar principle. What scale are we using? C major, you're using the C major scale. So the notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's your pool of notes. In terms of the chords, the tonic chord is C major, and the dominant chord is G7. Sometimes voiced where the pinky plays the, uh, the F within the chord. And again, the chords are moving in the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And guess what? The hand pattern you worked out before, it still works. One, two, three, then the next bit, four, five, six, the only bit that you need to worry about a little bit is what bass notes you're playing. Again, any of the notes from the scale will work in theory, but a logical choice is playing G, A, then B, and as you're doing that, notice I'm keeping this finger here because I can then do arpeggios if I want, either rolled or the more straight version. And then it's simply a matter of landing on your tonic chord, C, and it's the same hand pattern. Thumb, index, thumb, thumb, and the two together with a god bay. Thus giving you Allegria in the key of C major. So there you have it, a simple overview of roughly what you can do if you want to start changing things over to other keys. And the point I'm trying to make here is very clear. If you can play Allegria in E, do not be scared of playing it in other keys. It's relatively simple once you understand that apart from the notes changing and the chords changing relative to the new key you're in, it all works out absolutely fine. I leave that in your capable hands. Well, my friends, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. But if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. There'll be more videos coming soon. If you want to study with me on a more one-to-one -one basis, you can book Skype and Zoom lessons via my website. A link is in the description below. Until we next see each other, you stay safe, and as always, Thank you for watching.